Well, thanks for the introduction. So thanks for having me, everyone. I've been uh, presenting um, with with, uh, with your group for you know a few years now, at different times. So I'm, I'm always happy to come back. And so they've asked me to come back and talk about technology um, devices like smart home devices. And I had talked about this a couple of years ago, but there's always changes and it's a good refresher. And I just think it's, they're using a lot of these devices will really help um, make your life a little easier and you're going to find them pretty cool. So uh, as we go along, if you have any questions, please feel free to just jump in there and ask your question and I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. And, or if you want, you could wait until the end and we're going to have some questions at that point. So with that, I'm going to uh, get started. So smart home technology. And so what is a smart home? <laughs> it's probably, probably, it's just, it, um, it, it's a smart home refers to just the convenient home setup um, of all of your smart devices. So smart, you know, device in a smart home, it's it's all connected through the internet. So it, your homes con consisted of, I'll give you ex examples as we go along of different devices, but basically your whole home is set up of all these devices and they're all connected to your internet and they talk to each other and you can control things such as, you know, the, your security in your home, the temperature, the lighting, you can do it all remotely. Um, and you can do that either using your smartphone, a tablet or um, a computer. And you can see here, this is kind of an example of what it is. So you can see on your phone, it says a smartphone home and from your phone, you're controlling all these different devices in your home. You can see here, this, you're controlling cameras, your lights, temperature, even your TV and your outlets. So I'm gonna go through a lot of different ones that you might find helpful and let you know kind of the pros and cons of it. And, and some of them are a little bit more difficult to use and you might need help setting up. Um, but I'm going to at least give you some options that are, that are out there. So how can smart home, how can smart devices help? So each smart device is controlled by its own app, or you can link them together into one app that can control everything because there's so many different um, devices out there. So in different brands, you might have, um, you know, you might have different lights that are from uh, one company and then you might have your plugs your smart plugs that are from another company and they all have their own apps so you don't have to open a bunch of different apps to control everything you can put them all into one dedicated place so you open up one app and you control everything in your smart home for that one app so i'll show you um, some options I, sorry i'm just getting a little bit organized here um okay so i uh, will we have a very successful family day which was like amazing there was a car trip one way, one hour, and then one way hour back. And, and just when we went, he went down the tubing about three times, and then when it was time to leave, we just had like a little bit of an upper, like a flop, and tried picking up the roof, but it's bad. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I, it's an echo. I can't hear. I, sorry, I can't understand what you're saying there. I, can, I didn't pick up that. I, I don't know. Really back to the tubes and then I brought the tubes up at the end, so that was good. Um, I think um, we had a rough day on Friday. Um, he, um, on the way, he's had like 20 something rest by parent car drives, but on um, Friday I had um, Mary, are you there? Concerning, but at the same time, I am 
absolutely grateful for um, the medication and the changes in the medication. Hold on, I gotta just grab, grab everything with data sheets when I move to work. Hold on. Uh. Hello, I, is, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna talk. There's, there's, there's some someone talking in the background. I'm not sure what's uh, going on there. Um, I don't know if someone was trying to ask questions. I couldn't hear what was going on. So uh, I'm just going to continue with uh, the presentation here. So the um, with the smart devices. So you could use the same. You can make um, uh, you could use the dedicated app, or you can have them all in one group, which is like a, a using an, a Google Home or an Alexa, and that allows you to control everything. Um, now, I'll show you what I mean with that. So on my phone, I have an app here, everything in a group called Google Home. And in there, I was saying how each different program, so say if uh, my lights, I have, um, they're made by the brand Globe. There's other lights made by Casa. So I could go to each app themselves and open it up and control different things. These are different lights. Um, and it's a little bit difficult then I have to go into each, each one. So instead of going through them all, I could have them all into one place, like in a Google Home app, and I would have everything in one dedicated spot. And you can also use Alexa as well. And you can see on here, if I was going to control all the devices, you can see Google Home here at the top, the hub, and it would control everything. You can either have one of those displays or you could use an Alexa, which is which would also do the same, the same thing. Okay, so some of the devices that you can use, the smart, uh, smart devices, are lights, which is a very popular one to use. Um, they have when it first started out, they only had this kind, which was a regular bulb. And then now they've changed it. So you have ones that are colored. You can have the candelier type. They have the G10 ones and the strip lighting. And the benefits of having the smart light is that you're able to control everything either by, you know, on your phone or through using Google. You can you can use your voice and say, you know, turn off the lights, turn on the lights, turn down the lights, uh, you know, change the color. You can do it all by voice or by control on your, um, or the control on your, uh, sorry, I'm getting a lot of messages, Bob. I don't know if there's been errors going on here, if everybody can hear me or or, uh, or what, but um, <laughs> so please let me know if you can. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, we can okay. hear you. Thanks for letting me know. Sorry, there was all kinds of technical stuff going on here at the beginning. So. Um, so that's the benefits of having the smart lights. It's just also having them on timers. So you can have it go off, you know, at a certain time at night, your lights automatically turn off for you. Or, you know, when you wake up in the morning, um, you can do those all kinds of settings. You can even have it so when you're when you're out and it and you're coming home and your lights are out, it'll detect that you're are home and your lights will automatically turn on. So your front porch lights will come on and you can you can see uh, where you're going. So they've made all kinds of um, advancements with the, with the lights. Some other ones are smart plugs. And the benefits of, of, of having these is that, you know, you can then control anything that you plug in. Um, so let's say you had a fan that you can plug into it and you can say to Alexa or Google, you know, turn the fan on and off, or you can use, because you can use the app as well. Um, you can also, you know, turn on uh, a lamp that you have. So maybe you didn't want to buy any of the light bulbs and you had a, a lamp, you could plug it in and then you could turn off the lights because it kills the power to the lamp. Um, so they have on the right here, just the regular kind of plug. And then over here you have actually smart power bars. So you can control every little outlet, even the USB plugs and eat. And so you control each switch individually. And then on the bottom here, bottom left, that's an outdoor plug. So I plug in my Christmas lights and it can get, it's all waterproof. So that way I can, um, you know, turn off, the, turn it on the, the Christmas lights from outside without having to 
you know, to, to go and, and do it. And it can be done all by voice. And I can even set timers on there because when my lights were on, I set a timer for it to come on and off at certain times. And it's all done through these smart plugs, um, which is, it's, it's very handy. Now, you can also do smart switches. So if you didn't want to change all of your light bulbs, um, which can be, you know, be quite a bit, and then they can add up uh, and get kind of costly, you could just change the actual switch. So then you can just say, you know, turn off a certain switch remotely, or you can do it, you know, through your Google or Alexa, and it'll turn the lights off. And it'll, this gets a little more complicated because you'll, you know, you should get an electrician to do it because they're going to be rewiring the light switch, and it can get a little bit um, complicated. I also noticed that some of the older homes, they don't have the right um, wires inside. So then it makes it almost impossible to um, to go in and rewire your, your switches. So the easiest way is just to change your bulbs. But if you do have a switch, I mean, that is an option. So I see, Joy, you have your uh, your hand raised. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sure you... funny, I was going to say a funny thing. Do you think that the, um, you could say, turn on the coffee machine? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to turn on the what? Coffee machine. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you can. You can turn on the coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it to control pretty much anything. It just because it, it kills the power or turns the power on at that switch. So anything you plug into it, you can turn <laughs> on and off. So I like it for the fan because a lot of them, you know, it's, you know, if you're lying in bed, I can say turn the fan on and off if I have a just a, a desktop fan. And it's kind of handy, especially if you have trouble getting out of your chair to turn the fan off and it just helps if you have any you know any physical uh, um, issues right uh, so it's kind of handy that way there's also video doorbells so this is my favorite i would say out of everything out of all my smart home devices because i have a lot of smart home devices and there's different options so there's this is the, the google nest um, in the past, it used to only be wired, so you you would you you would have had to have a doorbell previously already installed, and then you could replace it with the wires. But now the new ones, they make it wired or battery operated. You get either one; they're two separate ones that cost the same, but it's handy. So somebody presses the button, it pops up on your phone, um, or it'll come up on your on your the display on your Google or your Alexa, whatever device you're using, and then you can talk to them. You can see. Right here, you can see on the on the right, it says you can hit the button to talk, you can ignore them, or you can hit a response where it automatically it'll say to them, you know, I'm not home right now, leave the package. Um, but it's nice because you don't have to get up and try to get to the door in time. And it's good for security, also good for if there's any physical limitations. I, I've done this for a lot of clients um, who have a hard time getting around. So they said a lot of times people ring the door, it takes them a while to get there. Um, and it's very hard on their body and causes lots of pain. So this way they don't have to get up. They can talk to that person. There's also some other benefits of it as well. It lets you know there's intelligent alerts. So it tells you if it detects somebody, so it's good for security, they don't even have to press ring the doorbell. If it sees them in the frame, it'll pop up and say it detected somebody. Um, you do have to, you there is a subscription that you pay for for a lot of some of these, fe these features. Um, also, if, if you get a, a package delivered, it detects, it actually knows that there's a package. It pops up on your phone and it'll say it detected a package. And um, and it also, if somebody went and took it, it would alert you that your package has been, you know, somebody picked it up. Um, you can do in some intelligent ones where it says when an animal or vehicle is coming to view, so it'll let you know if it detected a certain, um, if, it, if it's actual animal or a vehicle, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, I'll show you what it kind of looks like on, on mine. Uh, yeah, I'll show you in a second, but it also, it's recording. This is a fee that you have to pay for, and it's only available on the wire. The, the ones that are battery operated, it won't record, but you can have it recording for 24, 24 seven. So it's always recording. I can go back anytime and see what it picked up in the camera, uh, which is a nice feature. So if I go on my phone right now, I can show you how I have it set up. So I have the Here's the Nest, and I have the other outdoor cameras as well, but I'll show you just to get started. There's the front door. This is actually where it says here, front door. That's my video doorbell. So when I 
when I'm on there, I can go back and see a whole history. It detects motion. It saw my cat in the video. You can see here, and it says, and it, it, it time stamps it as well. So I can go back, and there's my, you know, my son leaving. It says it's a familiar face, and usually it will say the person's name. But I can go back and see the whole time. So I have other cameras as well, outdoor cameras, which I'll get into later. But it's good because then it's looking at um, the whole property. So some of my cameras are offline right now, but it's kind of a nice. Nice feature. Now you don't have to get a nest. There's other options as well. There's a ring, which works the same, just as good as nest. Um, they make a wired doorbell. They make and they also make battery operated. And you can see it looks the same. It also records, you know, twenty four seven. So you just have to decide what you kind of like better. I find ring is more designed if you're um, an Alexa user and if you're more of a Google user you use a Google home system then if you get the um, and then you go with the the Google video doorbell they also make you're going to see a ton of other brands out there as well there's genie and all kinds of, of inexpensive ones um, the only difference with them is the the, the video quality um, you know the more the ones that are pretty cheap out there the video quality is not as good uh, so if you you're looking at somebody in the camera, they might look really grainy and it's hard to see what they look like. The audio as well can be pretty staticky. And sometimes they don't record, um, you know, they only record different clips, maybe 10 second clips. They won't record 24 seven. Um, so you have to decide what's best for you. And then you can also, I showed you some outdoor, some cameras. So you could, when I brought up my when I, when I opened up the cameras, you could see there was other ones, not just my front door. There was all throughout my house. And you can see here, this is an, this is one of the Nest outdoor cameras. And they could see it showed up on my Google Home and it said that's the backyard and it detected motion and, and it could tell you if, there's, if it sees a person or, um, so it's kind of good because it's looking at my, my cars all the time. Um, you can get these can be wired or they can, now they make them um, battery operated as well. But the downside of the battery one is that you have a camera outside and you have to recharge the batteries probably every month, then you have to, you know, climb up a ladder sometimes and, and change the batteries. Um, so whenever you can get, if, if you can plug them in, then it's a lot better if you have that option. Um, now there are lots of other cameras out there as well. And again, it's just like the video doorbells. It's the quality. So there's cheaper ones where maybe the video is not as good in the, um, in the recording but there are lots of ones out there. One of the things to look for where it says, um, I recommend getting something that's Wi-Fi, uh, which means that you don't have to have a cable running from the camera right into your house and plugged into like a, a device. So the most important feature to look for would be Wi-Fi enabled. So that way it's connecting wirelessly. Now you still have to have some power to it, you know, a plug or a battery, but make sure it's, Wi-Fi, or you're going to be running into a lot of issues where you're running cables everywhere. And then you can see here, you know, in the right-hand corner, that's a floodlight. That's a security camera. So that's a ring version. So it detects motion. It's it's and the lights come on. Also, it's recording. And then here, this is a cheaper one on the on the right side where you actually don't have to have power. It screws into any light bulb outside, and then it becomes a camera and that's where you're getting the power from. There's no battery or any plugs. It gets power from the actual socket. So that's a good option. And these are really inexpensive, but again, the quality of the video is not as good, but it's, it's actually a really good option. If you're, if you need something, if you're looking for at least a camera and you can control it, you can see it spins around and, and I see joy, do you have your hand raised again? Yeah. Um, I was going to say that my twin brother has a, uh, in Arizona, um, he has um, he has that set up because he has the um, he, the reason why he has it set up is because he wants to make sure that no one breaks into his um, office. So he has that set up, and he also has it set up in his house, just like you do. Um, you know, yeah. especially when he comes to Long Island to visit us. You know, he could, he shows us how um, he showed us how uh, he has it set up. You know, yeah, but they, no, also have, they also have one other thing. I don't know, like, um, that I know of that with the Alexa with the wireless thing, which I'm gonna get. Um, they have it where you can say Alexa, um, call nine one one, like, um, like 
if you have an emergency, they also have that too. Um, I know I'm not, I mostly use Google, but I know with Google, um, with Google Homes, it won't call 911, but it will call somebody like a friend in an emergency. Um, Alexa, Alexa might call 911. Um, yeah, not, they I'm have it. I saw, I saw it and I was um, going to look into getting it because, you know, when you live alone, you know, and God forbid you can't get to the phone, um, you can just say, Alexa, um, I have an emergency and it goes to the police department and uh, the police come. Wow. Oh, that's neat. I'm going to have to check into that one. I wasn't sure that Alexa did that. I know you can, uh, you know, you can call people, you know, so say somebody had a fall, you could say, oh, call, you know, somebody, a friend of yours or something, you say their name and it will call. Um, but that's great. I'll check into that with uh, Alexa. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's a good, good. Yeah. I mean, for all uh, of us, you know, that have brain injuries, you know, I, I um, had an accident ago so that's one of the reasons why yeah. i was uh, interested in this yeah no it's it's definitely a good safety because they have those pendants you can press for safety and things like that but if you you don't want to have that and sometimes you don't always have it on your around on you at least then you could if you're able to talk you could you know if you have some googles or alexas around your home then you could say yeah. you know for to call for I, help. I wanna, yeah of course i wanted to um share that you know because uh a lot of us i don't know if there's other people that um have brain injury like myself um if you have an emergency like that and you can't get to your phone um i wanted to make sure i shared that when i came to here today great thanks Joy. um okay so the other thing I'm bringing up here is Wi-Fi extenders and beacons, which is basically the same thing. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that if you are going to install a lot of these smart devices, especially cameras outdoors, um, then it's going to have trouble reaching the internet because they're far. Usually, they're outside. They're far away from wherever your your internet is. So these extend the signal. So you have these things and you plug them in different areas of your home and they're like their own internet. So they're extending your, the internet signal further so that you can reach all areas of your house. You can see here in the picture that they have them in different rooms. So it's giving out a signal and you can reach everywhere. So if you have certain spots in your house that are, you don't really get a good internet signal, then if you use these, um, they help extend it and you'll, you'll need them if you're putting outdoor cameras because it, it's gonna, they're going to probably act up. Uh, you can get them at, if you're a Bell or Rogers user, they rent them to you. You can say you want these extenders and then they, I think it's an extra maybe three or $4 a month for each one. Um, so if you're having internet signal, you know, if it's not reaching everywhere in your house, then these are all a, a good option. You can buy your own as well, but it gets a little complicated, but if it's a lot easier if you're able to just rent them from your internet provider, if they have them. But I thought I'd just mention that. Okay, automatic door locks. Now, these are very handy. I don't I don't have one of these, but I've been meaning to get one. I installed a lot of these for um, for my clients. They get a little bit complicated because when you're you're replacing your actual door lock, and sometimes the lock is a little too small and I've had to drill and make the hole bigger. So it is a, can be a little bit um, of a challenge to get this installed, but they're very handy. Um, you can see one, one goes on the outside, you put a digital code in, and then this is the inside part. And this is, and on the right, that's just the what sends the signal. You plug that anywhere in your house. And I'll show you the benefits of it. So when you have it, that's the, the last the nest one that I showed you. The, it's connected through the Nest app. Um, or you can you know control it through the Google Home or Alexa. And you can unlock your door from anywhere. It, you can create passwords for family, guests, and other people you trust. So it's nice that so you can have a password for yourself. Then you can have a password maybe for, you know, um, say you have a cleaner that comes in. So they have a special password and it's separate, it's different from yours. So they enter it. And what it does is it tells you, it'll know when they enter, you'll get alerts saying, say their maybe their name is uh, Brenda. You get, if Brenda put their password in, which is separate from yours, you'll get an alert on your phone saying, it'll know it's Brenda. It'll say Brenda has arrived. And you can also make it too, so that say you want Brenda you don't want her to know the code because you know you don't want her to be able to come in your house whenever she wants 
uh, for security, then so you can make it so Brenda's code only works on Mondays from a certain time. So only the times that she might be there to help clean. So she can't get in there at night. She can't go there any other time outside of whatever you parameters you set. So that's part's nice. Um, also, if you're not home, uh, you know, and somebody knocks at the door, you see you have a friend visiting and you can unlock the door for them. But we even given the password. You can hit a button. It'll unlock the door. They can come in and wait for you. You can talk to them. It's nice because so, so, the video doorbell works nice with that. You can talk to them. You, you see who's there. And you say, oh, come on in. And you hit the button and unlock the door. You can also set it so um, if you're somebody who sometimes forgets to lock the door. So at nighttime, you can have it. Um, so automatically every time, you know, 10 o'clock at night, it'll lock the doors automatically for you. Or when you open the door and come in 30 seconds after you come in, it'll automatically lock. So these are things that you can set up, which are great, um, some great safety uh, features. There are also smart appliances. Now this can get very costly because a lot of people have appliances and you've had them for a while and to go buy smart appliances you're gonna have to change everything your stove and your fridge and and they're more expensive now so it can get pretty costly but it, there are some nice benefits from it i mean you can control them all from uh you know from your smart home so you can use the you know your phone and you go into the app or you can use it like I said, from google or alexa and some of the, you know, just the nice features of it is that it's from big time is the safety one. So say you forget to leave the stove on, it'll let you know, um, you know, if your fridge door is left open, it'll, it'll alert you, um, you know, it just, your timer is, you know, from your oven, it'll, you, it'll alert you that way. If you're, if you're not home and you wanted to turn off your oven or even start up your dishwasher or start your laundry, turn it on and off. Like there's so many things you can do remotely. Um, it's mostly for that safety feature is what is what I find. But if you're thinking, you know, a big one with my clients is that is the is forgetting to leave to leave the stove or the oven on. That's been the one that I hear the most. And like I don't want to spend the money and get a whole new stove. So there is a good option as a backup, which is a lot cheaper. This is called a wallflower. So what it is is this this plug, and it goes in the back of your stove you can see here and your stove plugs into it so what happens is then you install the wallflower app and so this is makes your stove it turns it into a smart stove so if you're cooking and you forget to leave your that you left the oven on or the stove on it will alert you and it says here did somebody forget to turn the stove on it's been on for longer than usual so it's kind of a reminder also if you left your stove on and you and you leave the house it uses your gps coordinates so it knows you left the house and says you left the home with the stove on so then it warns you that oh my stove is on i mean you have to go you can't turn it off and on from the app like you could if you bought an actual smart stove but you would at least know it's on and you can go back then and turn it off you can also put family members on here so say you forgot it on but then it'll notify your spouse your child that oh you left it on you know and or someone else in the family left it on so it's kind of a it's kind of a nice uh, feature and it also it can set off an auditory kind of uh, noise warning noises as well but i find it's it's great for it's a, it's a great option for without having to replace all of your devices like all of your um your um you know your appliances <laughs> i think of the word um and I think if I, I haven't bought this in a long time, but I think it's around $250 for one of these. And uh, if, so anything I'm showing you now, if you have any, you know, you wanted to learn more about them or you can always reach out afterwards. Um, I'm going to, I can share the slides and also it's being videotaped. Um, and I can definitely send you any links if you're something you're like, oh, I want to know what this wallflower, I can send you a link to go to their website. And, and so that way you can look into it more yourself. Okay, you can also get um, smart uh, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. So the ones that we normally, like the regular ones, they just make an auditory noise. Now, these ones can be put out throughout the house, and the smart feature on it is that it's going to actually tell you. So say you have these, one in your basement, one in the kitchen. So you're if you're sleeping or you're not home, it's kind of nice then because it'll make the auditory noise, but it's going to 
um, get an alert on your phone and it'll say it detected smoke in the down in downstairs or smoke in the kitchen. It'll tell you actually where, what zone, and then you'll know that, you know, when you're not home that there's a fire at your house or if you're sleeping, you wake up and you're kind of, you know, I know with me, I'm a little bit confused when I wake up and I, if I hear a smoke detector going off, you know, I can look on my phone and it'll tell me actually where it is. I know, oh, it's in the basement. Okay, you know, I don't, I, or if it's, it's saying it's in up, it's outside my bedroom door, um, you know, I'm going to take a lot more precaution because I know it's close to me. So it's, it's kind of a nice feature that way. I'm sorry. You also have um, smart thermostats. There's different kinds. This is a Nest one. I just have um, Honeywell. It's a cheaper version. They all work the same way. Uh, the, the, you know, the benefit of this is it's just that when you're, if, well, what I do support is when I'm not home. So I say I go on vacation, I can set it so I, I turn the temperature way down if it's, you know, if it's in the winter. Um, and then uh, just before I get home, you know, hours before I get home, I can go remotely on my phone and turn it back up. Um, you can even set, you know, you can set it so at a certain time at night, it turns off, like turns the temperature down, it turns it up. Uh, so there's all kinds of different things you can do remotely with your thermostat. Even when I'm sitting down, I don't want to get up. I can say to Google, you know, to turn turn up the temperature or turn down the temperature. So on my phone, I said I just I said I had used just a cheaper version. So if I go into my Google Home file, um, I just use one. This is the app for it here, and it's a Honeywell. It's a lot cheaper. It does everything I want to do. So right now I can remotely turn my temperature up and down. I can change it over to heating, cooling, or turn off my furnace. Um, and then I can even set schedules for on and off. And the nice part is I can do this when I'm not home. And it's a lot cheaper because these ones are probably like $300 or so. And the one I bought, I think, was, was $50. And it does the same thing as, uh, you know, as the Google. The only times I, I usually recommend Google is when you're with the video quality, like with the cameras, and just because it, I find that the video and the audio is a lot better than the, the cheaper versions. Um, now, this was something I used to recommend when, when people didn't have a smart TV, but a lot of the new TVs now are smart TVs and you don't need this, but this plugs into the back of a TV and it turns any TV into a smart TV. So, and the benefit of that is that you can control your TV by voice or remotely. I can, you know, I can tell Google to turn my TV on and off. I can have it play a certain show, you know, turn up and down the volume and I can do it all by, all by voice. I don't have to use the remote control, which is kind of kind of handy. So this little feature here called a, Google, a Chromecast, it'll turn any TV into a smart TV. And then you can get smart blinds and curtains. So, um, which is you can control, you can you know use Google and Alexa, or you can use the app and say you know open my curtain, close my curtain. You can see in the in the sample here, and then you know it'll lower and close it. Now this can get pretty pricey using um, you know, the, the smart curtains. So if you go to price them out, they can get pretty expensive. Um, so it's something to, you, know, you might wanna do a little research into it. Uh, I haven't done it yet just because of the cost. I looked and I remember it was, it, was, it, was, it was quite a bit of money to get them changed over. But certain rooms, if you find, especially in your bedroom, that would be a nice one. Or if you have somewhere where you can't reach, high, if it's really high up windows, uh, then it's nice to have that controlled by voice, but you can, uh, at least it's an option. The garage, a smart garage door opener. So I do have this, and this is a nice feature because it will, I can just, when, if I'm not home, um, you know, and I see that I left the garage door open, I can remotely close it. Um, also, I have it set so it warns me at a certain time at night. So if I forgot that to close it before I go to bed, It'll warn me, and or I can have it so it automatically closes at a certain time at night. Um, even if it's been open for longer than an hour, I think it pops up and tells me your garage door has now been open longer than an hour. And uh, so it's kind of kind of a nice safety feature that way. So if I go into back onto my phone here, the app here is called I use my queue. That's the garage door opener. Oh, gotta scan my face here to open. And right now it says my garage door is closed. It's been closed for two hours. If I wanted to open my garage door, I could just press this button and it'll open and tell me 
how long it's been open or if it's closed. So if you're going to bed and you're wondering, oh, did I close it? You're, I can look on here and, and see, oh yes, it's closed. Um, they also make the you know robot vacuum cleaners and they even have mops now. So I don't have these because I, I just have a lot of uneven floors and I'm, I haven't, like other people who've had them said they work well, but for me, I don't think it works well enough for, for me to get. And then again, they make different versions and make some ones that are inexpensive and ones that are a lot, you kind of get what you pay for, I think with these, but what you do is you, you can set parameters um, and then the robot will go around and automatically you know, clean the floor. You can have it set at certain times to clean uh, and even mop the floor. So you can have one, another one here that'll go around and automatically mop the floor for you. So I don't have a lot of experience with these because I, I don't have one, but does anybody else, have, anybody have these that, and they enjoy them? No, I, I know some people who have, they said they, they do like it, but I think it's mainly if you, uh, if everything's all on one level and there's not different transitions in your floor and, and, and then it's pretty, then I think it would be good. And so that's 